Chet is out for the year, but the Thunder still have 17 more players on their roster that they have to figure out what to do with. I can't help but feel a little sympathetic for Mark Degnault, who had probably spent a metric buttload of time thinking of lineups and minute distributions, and of course Chet was a centerpiece of all of it. Now Mark has to take Chet out of the deck and reshuffle, and he has to come up with a way to distribute anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes that would have gone to Chet to the other players on the team. So what kind of impact is the Chet news going to have on the players outside of the core OKC starters? Mainly Darius Baisley, Alexei Pokushevsky, and the three rookies that we drafted after Chet. I'll begin by looking at building block Baisley. Baisley is a polarizing player. He can defend at a decent level and is highly adept at staying out of foul trouble while at the same time being a top 50 player in blocks per game. On the offensive end, things are less productive. He was 29.7% from 3 last season, and when he's asked to self-create, things don't usually end well. He did see a boost in many of his stats when he started coming off the bench though. Going up against reserves, he scored 3 more points on less shot attempts. His field goal percentage shot up from a miserable 37.3% to a less miserable 49.4%. Unfortunately, his 3 point percentage didn't get the memo to go up and it actually got worse. Last season, he averaged about 28 minutes per game and that time was surely going to go down with the addition of our rookies and most of all Chet. Now Baisley will likely have more time to show off the improvements he's made over the summer. He probably won't go back to his 28 minutes that he got last season but he'll have about 24 plus to show if his 3 point shot is any better, if his efficiency increases to at least league average for forwards, if he limits his turnovers to not have a 1 to 1 assist to turnover ratio, if he gets rid of his iso game and finds out how to play more into the team rhythm by making great cuts, by making extra passes, and especially by hitting his open threes. And Baisley is going into his 4th year, which is why I hope he makes the most of his extra time on the court. Darius is who I consider to be under the heaviest pressure to make the most of this extra time, but the player that I think is going to have the most opportunities to showcase themselves is none other than Alexei Pokushevsky, everybody's favorite Pokemon. The thing about Poku is that most NBA fans that don't watch the Thunder might think that he and Chet must be similar players because of their similar measurements. I would beg to differ. I would describe Chet as a center forward with guard-like skills, and Poku as a guard with the frame of a center forward. But even though they have different playstyles on offense, the Chet-sized hole in the Thunder is likely going to allow Poku to see extra playing time. Unlike Baisley though, Poku is the type of player that can be maximized when he has the ball in his hands. So far we've seen him make great passes and hit beautiful shots. But unfortunately, we also see him play a whole lot of bad basketball. The real key for Poku is going to be his shot finishing. He's tall and fluid enough that he can often get a good shot, but more often than not, the shot ends up becoming a turnover. He hasn't found his efficiency with the ball in his hands or as a catch and shoot guy. That being said, one positive trend in Poku's development so far has been exactly in that area. His shooting percentages have for the most part improved, in some cases quite dramatically from his rookie year to his sophomore year. His 3 point percentage has gone up, and his 2 point field goal percentage went up by a quite impressive 10 percentage points. I worry that he's still too raw going into his third year, but Thunder fans knew that Poku was a long term project. If he continues an upward trend in his shot making, we might be looking at a positive impact player by the end of the season, and he'll get all the more experience out on the court now that Chet is out for the season. The next player I want to talk about is yet another tall and skinny positional hybrid. Definitely noticing a trend here. Usman Dieng from France is a 6'10 guard forward whose game is very similar to Poku's. Based on what we saw in Summer League, Dieng really shows his potential when he's running the offense. His shot seems more consistent than Poku's and I don't recall any behind the back passes to the 4th row, so I believe his base starting point is a bit higher than Poku's was as a rookie. However, from a developmental standpoint, it's still too soon to say where Usman is. He's only 19 years old and is still in the show's flashes stage. Now that Chet is out though, we might see Dian get more time on the Thunder as well. 
During Poku's first year, he got a ton of time with the OKC Blue to start the season off, and then ended up playing a large amount of minutes on the Thunder towards the end of the season. We may see a similar path for Dieng. And if the Thunder's lineups get more experimental and developmental towards the end of the season, as they have been the last few years, there's a good chance that Usman is the biggest beneficiary from the extra minutes, since he'll have a green light to run the offense and shoot a bunch of threes, just like Poku did in his first year. Hopefully Usman makes the threes. And that brings me to yet another rookie on the Thunder that doesn't fit a stereotypical mold, who now might see more run on the Thunder throughout the season. Jalen Williams from the University of Arkansas is theoretically a center, and although his summer league was mostly underwhelming, he did show off a very promising ability to make reads and find the open man with a great pass. He also demonstrated his great knack for drawing charges, an underrated skill that I could see being useful in real game situations. On the flip side, it was clear that he has limited athleticism and size compared to other centers, which is certainly going to limit his impact on the floor. J. Will is a prime candidate for spending a long amount of time with the OKC Blue and getting those reps in, getting a feel for OKC's system and how opposing teams will play him. With Chet being out of the lineup, I could see Jalen getting a good chunk of time with the Thunder near the end of the season, potentially along Usman Dieng in the more developmental lineups. I think Jay Will's future on the Thunder is still a long ways from being determined, but if he can continue honing his playmaking and if he can develop a 3 point shot to help space the floor out, I can envision a future where he plays a small and specialized role for the team that opposing defenses might not be ready for, particularly because of his playmaking. And last but certainly not least, we have the other Jalen Williams, J-Dub if you will. He's yet another example of a, push of, a push of a positionally flexible hybrid on the roster. Standing at 6'6 and with a wildly impressive 7'2 wingspan, J-Dub is a player that should see a ton of different assignments during this season. It's likely he gets put on players from all positions on the court. He might get put on Jordan Poole or Klay Thompson for one possession, and suddenly be the main defender on Draymond Green or Kevon Looney only a few minutes later. J-Dub was always going to get a solid chunk of minutes no matter what, based on what he's capable of bringing to the team. That is shooting, off-ball movement, and being able to make reads and keep the ball moving. Now that Chet is out however, he's gonna go from being the rookie with the second most minutes, to being the rookie with the most minutes. And although I do expect him to be making plenty of mistakes like rookies often do, I think the extra time on the court is going to be extremely beneficial for him from a developmental perspective. As a very toolsy player, he has a lot to his game that needs to be explored and developed in order to maximize his potential. And this season should be an excellent conduit to that, even more so now. And with that said, thanks for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with my content. And I want to remind you that you can buy my new OKC merch at a discount. You get 10% off by using promo code HUSTLE on any of the items. And I'm always working on new stuff, like these two posters that should be going up pretty soon. And as a heads up, the topic for the next Thunder video is going to be about the silver linings of Chet missing his first year. Call it positivity, call it copium, call it whatever you want. I had a lot of fun making the video, and for Thunder fans that were feeling down because of Chet's injury, I hope to at least help you feel a little bit better. As always, keep on hustling, and I'll see you next time.